Hi, I'm James Smith from RC4 Wireless, and this is a review of the RC4 Magic DMX to Dim Dimmer. And it is, uh, I think, the most exciting little piece in the RC4 Magic uh, arsenal of pieces because it's just so small and versatile. It is great for props makers, uh, lighting designers who need to hide a light somewhere in an unusual spot, something that's untethered. It is um, just fabulously small and versatile and is perhaps the uh, most popular and, uh, and useful piece. And look how tiny that is. It's barely bigger than a matchbox. This is an automotive fuse. So uh, just take a close look at the outside of that. There are screw terminal connections. And uh, so the power comes in from a battery here, positive and negative, marked in uh, red and black. And this will work anywhere from 6 to uh, 18 volts DC. 12 volts is typical. And on the output, there are two dimmers. So there's a screw, there are two screw terminals for dimmer A, two terminals for dimmer B. So very, very easy to hook up, uh, both for power in and for outputs to your loads. So you know, a very, very common light or load that we would use for a device like this would be an MR16. So I'm, I have one right here. So I, of course, you're familiar with an MR16. This is a 12 volt DC device little socket, and I have extended the wires on this socket. And for a source of battery power, I have uh, a mid-size 12 volt, 5 amp hour battery. That is a 12 volt battery. There are many sizes of these sealed lead acid batteries available, and uh, they're used often in um, UPSs, uh, uninterruptible power supplies, power backups for computers and things, and also in emergency lighting. So there are enough uh, commercial and commonplace applications for batteries of this kind that they're relatively easy to find and relatively low cost. And because they're sealed, they're also very safe. They don't uh, off-gas to any significant degree, so they're not causing corrosion. They uh, use a, a gelled electrolyte, which is why they're sometimes called a gel cell, and so they can be oriented in any position. However you might design a set piece, you may need it to be hanging underneath inside something or uh, on its side, and none of these are, not, positioning is never an issue with a sealed uh, maintenance-free lead-acid battery. So I will connect the dimmer to the battery. I have pre-made a little harness that's, uh, you know, could be, this could be done in a show this way with, uh, with alligator clips. More often you will use a spade terminal that will attach right to the battery. But I will uh, plug these wires in now to the plus and minus DC inputs on the dimmer. So I'm going from the dimmer just as you would receive it when you've purchased a new one. Connecting the wires and now uh, connecting it to a battery. And when I connect it, there are some LED indicators on the side which come on and you can see those. And I'm just going to disconnect the battery again and turn it back on so you can see them do a little power up. So there's a little side-to-side -side light show to tell you that they're on. And I have a transmitter that is running just off to the side here. So let's look closely at the three LEDs. The first blinking red LED shows you that the RF system is connected. If that light is not blinking, it's solidly on, then this unit has not found a transmitter yet. And when it has found the transmitter and it's active and connected, the RF connection light is blinking like this. And then if you've seen my review of the transmitter, you'll remember that data packets are sent relatively slowly when channels are not changing and more rapidly when channels are changing. And right now you're seeing the receiving end of that same packet rate. If I go over to my transmitter and move some channels up and down, you'll see that that middle LED marked data is on more when more packets are flowing in. And if I leave the channel stationary, that, uh, that will slow down and blink a little bit more noticeably. And then finally, the RSSI stands for Receive Signal Strength Indicator. And it is blinking at different speeds to indicate signal strength. Right now, for the sake of making this little video for you, I have the transmitter and receiver very, very close together. And that's a very high signal strength. And thus, it is blinking so rapidly, you almost can't see it. But I will try and move them apart a little bit here and get that to blink. Try and orient the antenna in such a way that it blinks slower. And in fact, that's quite difficult to do. Just a few feet apart, I can't really get it to slow down. 
But in a real world environment, you will see that that RSSI light is blinking. And the faster it blinks, the better your connection. And the slower it blinks, the farther away the transmitter is positioned. And if there are obstructions in the way, it will be blinking even slower. And finally, if it is blinking quite unsteadily, that gives you an idea that perhaps your transmitter and receiver are too far apart. And you'll get that kind of indication out at uh, beyond 200 feet away in a typical theater application. Now, at the dimmer side of things, there are, at the other end are two LEDs, which you saw were just on a moment ago because I was moving channels up and down. You'll see that this is, uh, there is a, there are two dimmers in there, and they're both assigned to the same channel or dimming together. And I would like to assign those to channels of my choice. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. This is kind of a neat trick that I invented myself, which is uh, to reduce the square inch area that we need to dedicate to switches and things. You go to your console, and you bring up a single channel that you would like to assign to something. So let's use. Uh, this channel will be channel 3. So I now have just that channel up. And while that channel is up, I will push a set button on the front of the dimmer. There's set A and set B. And with a little tool, in this case I'm using the end of a bent paper clip, I will push the set A button momentarily. And that has assigned that dimmer. Now you'll see that light is on. And it remembers that setting forever after. So now, Channel B is actually still set to the first channel, which is where we were when I powered this on. I powered it on, and both dim A and dim B were set to the first DMX channel. And now, dimmer A is set on channel 3. It's non-volatile memory. You can do this setup once at the beginning of a production and never have to touch that again. It lets you set any DMX channel to any dimmer. They don't have to be contiguous channels, and it's very easy to do.